All right, hey, what's up, guys? Gratuitous from itsgratuitous.com. If you guys would like to learn FL Studio, you guys can check out my FL Studio starter kit. Just go to itsgratuitous.com forward slash starter kit, and you guys will get an FL Studio project, a free book. And if you want to learn more, just go to the link, okay? So what is the difference between an effect and a generator? That's what I want to talk about in this video. And so an effect is something like an EQ, a good FL Studio stock one is the parametric EQ2, uh, or something like, uh, let's go like delay. All right, so this is an effect. Delay, right, fruity delay three, go to chorus, right, the fruity chorus. So these are effects. These are what we use to, you know, once we already have some audio going on, turn down a little bit. All right, so our effects are processing our audio. So nine is just going to this insert. So this project is not organized at all, but you can follow along. So from nine to nine, and if we were to add, let's say an, an EQ in here, okay, I'll load up a, um, an FL Studio stock plugin. I usually do like to use the Pro Q3. And a lot of people always ask like, what's the difference between, you know, different plugins? Uh, so this is great, okay? Uh, just the Pro Q3, uh, it's expensive. And it's just a workflow thing. So it's not even so much about what oh, gives you a better sound. It's just a workflow. Like, for example, you can create a couple of bands. You can highlight them. You, you can see you can adjust them. All right. So this right here is an effect. All right. If the audio is being, uh, if the audio is playing, right, we can adjust it however we want. And so that is an effect. But a generator is something where we are producing sound, something like flex. And I'll show you a couple of mine. Uh, again, I always tell you guys, you don't need tons and tons of plugins. You just need good plugins that you like to use over and over that, you know, are updated. So the nice thing about a stock plugin in FL Studio is a lot of, a lot of these plugins, like they maintain them. So they're backwards compatible and you have to think that way. Okay. For third-party plugins, I, I, I use a couple, but not tons, but these are generators, right? They are producing sound for us. There's different types of generators. And I also used FL Keys as well. This is a really, really good piano plugin. If you set it up right, you can get some really beautiful sounds, especially if you send it to uh, a mixer insert. And then uh, even if you set, like, you know, have like reverb and stuff. So this one I have, I used uh, a reverb and a compressor. So again, these are effects, right? So if we're going to be adding our plugins, into the plugin database. So for example, this is an effect and I keep this in dynamics and you can see it's, it's, so this is pro MB. It's a multiband compressor. So it's really important to get this organized. And if you want to learn how to organize it, you can check out my video I did on this about the plugin database on it's gratuitous.com. Um, but again, it's all about workflow. If you want delays, boom, that's how quick it is. All right. And you can create your own snap. Uh, you can learn about these snaps on my website as well. I want to give a shout out to Clint. He's the one who first introduced me to snaps. Uh, that's his image line user forum username. This is the one I use for tutorials, right? I always try to sell you guys on the exclusive audio drum bundle trio sounds, right? Uh, has tons of tons of kicks, claps. They're all organized, right? But here's another tab, and this is where all the effects are. And so. And I also uh, make sure to select my settings like this, right? I show you guys this in like my, my uh, beginner's course, but you can see that it just allows for only one folder to open. It allows things to be nice and quick. So you're going to see delay closes as, as I go to EQ and everything is nice and quick and, and good to go. So let's just hit play. Let's turn up just a little bit. Okay. So again, this track is only with flex. So uh, this bass is with three times oscillator. We'll check this one out. So you can see I used uh, this pack and it's free, right? This is flex. So let's just check out some of these melodies and we will go through uh, what I've done for, these are generators, right? We're gonna go to lead. This is uh, three times oscillator, just a really, really simple uh, little, uh, I think I just selected just a couple different uh, waveforms, just a little bit of fine tuning maybe. 
but it's just a really simple melody, but it's actually one of the main parts of this song. So if you listen to that part, So it cuts through quite hard. Uh, it's a little bit dull. Uh, maybe you would brighten that up a little bit. So just quickly. And many times, like, you know, if you see someone have a lot of different plugins, like I'm not saying to open up tons of plugins, but sometimes if I like a sound the way it is, because again, there's two different ways of doing EQ, right? There's like the sound design approach where you're, you know, like you're more aggressive on whatever you're trying to do. And then the next EQ is for making it work inside the mix. Here's the lead. So it could be as simple as something, just bring out some brightness. It just doesn't sound as dull. All right, so let's listen. It's cutting through a little bit better now, right? So simple simple lead but again not all sounds can be this this is just you know uh it's it's a lead like a, in my opinion it really cuts out nice um so that's the three times oscillator so this is you know since 2000 and they updated it okay so this is the essential strings and the all strings uh, staccato i always tell you when you're selecting sounds like if you're buying sounds you want to acquire a good variety of sounds. So let me just clone this because this will give us uh, a chance to check out some of these sounds inside of Flex because again, this is a generator. All right, and if we click over here, so this is sustained. You can hear that the note is sound now really long. All right, now if we go to staccato, now it's more like plucky. It's just a totally different sound. And depending on the style of music that you make, it's important to have pianos, different guitars, strings, right? Like I even like uh, more like the orchestra stuff, like horns and uh, that stuff really, really helps for beautiful music. Like let's check some of these out, right? Like that, like you could hear that in like certain types of dance music or like even like some type of hip hop maybe. It's a nice horn up here. It's different, but um, like for example, let's take this and layer it. We'll check it out. All right, let's play them both together. Mm, okay, so by itself, it's kind of cool, right? So check out maybe one or two more. Let's go back though. So again, that's flex and that was all string staccato. Um, so it's just all about having that variety. And when you use something like a rompler, okay, so this is called a rompler and it allows you just to select all these different sounds. And it's just about more making music. That's the whole goal of something like this. Now, if we were gonna go to a different type of generator, right, virtual instrument, like something like pigments or uh, serum or silent one, you know, uh, this might be for someone who enjoys sound designing a little bit more. It gives you more flexibility. A tool like this, Flex or Nexus, it's all about learning the music program and making beats. And that's what I recommend for someone who's brand new starting up. Uh, use Flex or use something like Nexus because you don't have to worry so much about, because these are technical, like pigments, serum, Silent One, even Citrus. Citrus is very complex. Like it has like this uh, mod matrix stuff going on. I don't fully understand it. I, I just like to make beats and something like Flex is perfect for my flow. Like I can do some to sound design like Silent One and Serum Pigments. I've always found Citrus to be a, a more advanced uh, synthesizer. So for someone who's looking for more advanced stuff, I always tell you guys like many times the FL Studio stuff is more advanced than even expensive plugins, okay? It's just about learning how to use them. And I'll give you an example. I've talked about this before, but in Dynamics, okay? So we come down here to the Fruity Limiter. And so this tool is so powerful. Most people don't realize that you can change your attack and release curves. It also has the sustain slash hold, right? We have that also on the compressor, the hold. Not all compressors have a hold. Uh, not all compressors allow you to have a uh, variable knee, 
right? A variable knee is very, very important. So built in has built in uh, external side chain. All right. So not all compressors have these options and the fruity limiter, like it, it, it gives you it all right. If we look at something like Maximus, now I don't use Maximus too much, but it is such a power horse. Uh, I don't have it selected in here. So what I could do is, so again, I like to set up my effects and my generators with my own workflow. All right. I always think that's really, really important. Um, but I still have the other plugin available to me just somewhere else. Okay. So Maximus is a fruity plugin and you just come down here to, I think it's just Maximus. Yeah. Right there. Right. So something like Maximus, this is a powerhouse when it comes to your mastering stages, right? You can adjust your low, your mid, your high, and then you actually even have a final master compressor. So a single band compressor uh, on top of that. And if we go to your bands, right, you can adjust, uh, you know, in between. So like, you know, your, your crossover point, it gives you your before and after gain. And then this is what makes Maximus so special is that you can customize the curve however you want, uh, which is like very similar to like their like wave shaper and, and stuff like that, right? So FL Studio stock stuff is very, very complex and very powerful. And it requires more knowledge than a lot of, you know, other plugins, third-party plugins, which look nice, um, like the compressor like this, like it, it, you know, it looks nice, but it also works nice as well. And that's why I always like fab filter, but then there are some plugins out there where they, like I said, they just look nice. They might be a little easier to use. So it all comes down to choice, understanding your tools. And, um, that's going to allow you to select good plugins and it'll allow you to have a good workflow. And, um, that is the difference between effects and generators. Um, so uh, I hope that um, helps in understanding more about FL Studio and beat making and uh, the effects of the generators. Because if you're just searching this stuff right now, you know, you're still very new and you're wanting to learn this stuff. Uh, so if you guys want more FL Studio training, then check out my website. It's gratuitous.com. It is uh, full of FL Studio courses. I have a membership where you can watch all the courses uh, and you feel free to send me an email anytime if you have questions. So thanks for checking out the video and I'll talk to you in the next one.